Selecting a date with a date picker that changes cell values is way easier than typing. So if you have a start and end date and wish to extract a list of a specific weekday between the two dates just by selecting the weekday from a drop list, this can be very useful in many work situations. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to insert a date picker in a very simple way. Insert two dates and a drop list. To extract a dynamic list of any weekday I want, I will use some dynamic array functions. A let function, sequence, filter, xlookup, along with other classic functions. So let's build our project from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. All what I did in this file is that I created some labels and I created a dynamic label in cell H1 that will read list of Tuesdays, list of Wednesdays or whatever day I select from a drop list. To the right side I created a list of weekdays from Monday to Sunday and I want Monday to be the first day of the week. I start my project by inserting a date picker without the need of writing any code. So I'll be inserting an add-in. An add-in is a little application that works in the platform of Excel. There are many add-ins that you can download for free just by going to the Insert tab of the ribbon and on the Insert tab you click on Get Add-ins. I'm searching in the Microsoft Store and I get a list of different add-ins. Among them, I want a date picker. Then I'll be typing Date Picker. I click on Search and I get different options for a date picker. Most of these add-ins are free. If I want more details, I just click on the first add-in and here it shows me a preview of this add-in and I can see that it's linked to a cell and here is the description. Yes, this is the one I want to bring. Then I click on Add. When I click on Add, I see the license term and privacy policy. I click on Continue. And the date picker is inserted in my worksheet. Let's move it somewhere in column D and E. I can resize it. It's a floating object on top of the grid. I do have many options here, so I can change the calendar size. If I click on toggle calendar size, I can make it smaller. I can make it bigger. I can change the theme. So if I want a green theme to match my worksheet, I can do that as well by clicking on change calendar theme. I'm changing the theme. Now I'm bringing a green color. I can also change the calendar system because right now it shows that Sunday is the first day of the week. I want to make Monday the first day of the week and I do that by clicking on change calendar system. Now I can see that the week starts on a Monday, Saturday and Sundays are weekends. I can also insert a week number by clicking on this toggle button, toggle week numbers. You can see the week numbers. I don't need them actually, then I'm going to turn it off. The next option is to highlight a date on the calendar and link it to a cell. I'll be doing that later. And then I can hide the settings by clicking on this command. When I click on hide settings, I don't see these controls. If I want to bring them back, then I click on the gear icon to bring them back. This is a simple date picker for which I didn't pay anything and it's available for me. Whenever I want to use it, I click on my add-ins and I see it listed along the office add-ins that I downloaded so I can use it in the future without having to go through all the steps. I'm going to close this dialog box and then I start my project. I select cell B1 and I want to select a start date. So I click on the left navigation button in my calendar. I want to select a date. Let it be the 1st of March. It's a Monday, as you can see. And when I select it, it pops up into the selected cell. And then I navigate to the front. I can highlight this date by selecting this option. And in this dialog box, it shows the selected cell. I hit OK and I would have highlighted the date. I want also to select an end date. So I click on cell B2 and then I navigate and I'll be selecting the end date, let's say the 30th of April. So here is my start date. Here is my end date. And what I would like to do is to create a drop list in cell B3 from which I select any weekday. Whatever weekday I select, I want to be able to extract 
a list of all the occurrence of that specific weekday between the start and end date. So if I select a Friday, I want all the Fridays between the start and end date. If I select a Monday, I want all the Mondays between the start and end date. Note this dynamic label will change whenever I create my drop list because this dynamic label is linked to cell B3. To create my drop list, a data validation drop list, I go to the data tab of the ribbon and to the right side of the data tab, I click on data validation. Alternatively, I hit the shortcut Alt DL. From this dialog box, I want to select a list, then I hit Tab L Tab, and with my blinking cursor in the source box, I click and drag to select all the weekdays, and then I hit OK. Now I can select from the list, keep an eye on the dynamic label. I want to extract a list of all Fridays, then the label is dynamic. If I want to extract a list of all Tuesdays, then here it says list of all Tuesdays. This is what I'm going to do next. But now I want to extract the day in number based upon the list I created in column P and Q. Because the week starts on a Monday, then Tuesday should be day number two. If I select, let's say, Friday, it should be day number five. How to do that? I'll be using an XLOOKUP function. The XLOOKUP function is an extraction function. It will look at cell B3, and then accordingly, it will extract that number. So I type equal XLOOKUP. What's your lookup value? My lookup value comes from cell B3, currently Tuesday. I type a comma. Where do you look for this day? I look for this day in the list of days in column P. I select all the lists from P1 to P7. I type a comma, and then what's your return array? My return array comes from column Q. I select all the numbers in column Q. I close the bracket, and I would have created my X lookup function. When I hit enter, Tuesday is day number two. Let me test the functionality by changing the day. So if I select, let's say, Thursday, that's day number four, and that's wonderful. What I would like to do right now is to create in memory a list of all the dates between the start date and the end date. And to do that, I'm going to use a sequence function and a let function. Let's start creating the sequence function first. So I'll be typing equal sequence, and then I hit tab. For the rows, I want all the days between the start and end date. And because the sequence function doesn't include the start and end date, it includes one of them, then I should be adding one. I want to subtract the start date from the end date. So I click on the end date type a minus sign, and click on the start date. And as I said, because not both of them are included, then I need to add one, so I say plus one. That's the first argument of the sequence function. I hit comma. How many columns you want? I want one single column. And then I hit comma. What's your start number? My start number will be the start date. And then I hit comma. The step will be one. I want to advance by one day at a time, so I type 1, and I close the bracket for the sequence function. Look what happens when I hit Enter. I get a list of all the dates between the 1st of March and the 30th of April. You might be surprised to see numbers, not dates, but we know that in Excel, a date is stored as a number. Day number 1 is the 1st of January, 1900, and since the 1st of January, 1900, Every day increments by one. We'll be fixing the formatting later on, but for now I would like to store this list of dates between the selected start date and the selected end date. I want to store it in memory. How can I do that? I put this sequence function inside the let function. The let function enables me to assign a name to a variable, and I'm going to do that in a simple let function. So I select the top cell where the function lives, I put it in the edit mode F2, and I'm going to wrap the sequence function inside the let function. I click before the sequence, and I type let, and then I hit tab. The let function enables me to name all these parts. The sequence function is returning this entire list, and I'm going to give it a name and use it later on in another calculation. I'm naming exactly as if I'm creating a defined name, but the name that I'm creating lives only inside the let function. I'm going to name this one my list, and then I hit comma. 
what's the value of my list, what's the value of this name, the value of this name will be the entire sequence function. I hit comma after the sequence function, and here is the calculation where I'll be using the name my list. What would you like to do with this list? Well, I want to filter it and extract only the occurrences of day number four. How do you do that? By using another dynamic array function, the filter function. So if I type filter and then I hit tab, what would you like to filter? Where is the range you want to filter? I'm going to use the named range, the variable that I'm creating, my list, storing this entire list of days. So I'll be typing my list a second time. I can select it from the IntelliSense list, and then I hit come. The second argument of the filter function, out of this long list, between the start and end date, and we are storing it inside the let function with the name my list, I want only to include the weekday number four. Then I'm going to use a weekday function. So I type weekday, and then I hit tab. Where are you looking at this weekday? I'm looking at this weekday in the same range named my list. So I type my list, and then I hit tab. And then I hit comma. When I hit comma, the second argument of the weekday, the return type, asks me, what would you like to consider at the first day of the week? If you type 1, that means you are considering Sunday, the first day of the week, and Saturday, day number 7. I want Monday to be the first day of the week, then I'll be using number 2. Monday is day number 1, and Sunday is day number 7. I hit the tab key, and I close the bracket. After closing the bracket, I want to say, in this entire list that starts on a Monday, if the weekday is equal to whatever I selected from the drop list. If the weekday is equal to whatever the XLOOKUP function is returning, C3, I close the bracket for the filter function, and I close the bracket for the LET function. Now I finished creating my function. The moment I hit enter, I get a list of all the Thursdays between the start date and the end date. Look at my label makes it easy for me to recognize which day is being returned. I want to format these numbers. There are so many ways of formatting them. So I'm going to select the starting cell. I select a range as needed, and I'm going to format it as date. There are so many ways of formatting as dates. I'm going to use the simplest technique, which is the shortcut Control shift 3 and I would have formatted the date. One final thing before testing, I want to count how many occurrences do I have. Then I'm going to create a count function in cell J2. I type equal count, and then I hit tab. What would you like to count? As you know, dynamic array functions are created in one cell, and then they spill into the adjacent cells. Then I want to refer to the spilled array. Then I select the top cell, and to expand my selection to the entire spilled array, I type Shift-3 on my keyboard, the pound symbol, the spilled array symbol, and I close the bracket for the count function. When I hit Enter, it says you have nine Thursdays between the selected start date and the selected end date. Now let's test. I want to change the start date. I select cell B1, and I want to start sometime in January. Let's say the 11th of January. It says, would you like to overwrite the contents of the cell? Yes, hit OK, and look at that. It's dynamic. I get a list of Thursdays between the 11th of January and the 30th of April. I can change the end date if I want, but what I would like to do is to change the selected weekday instead of Thursday. What if I select a Monday? I get a list of Mondays. I have 16 occurrence of Mondays. What if I select a Sunday? Then I get a list of Sundays. Everything is dynamic and is controlled by the date picker and the drop list. I want to hide the list in columns P and Q. I can select it, right click and hide, or I can simply hit the shortcut Control 0 to hide the two columns. We learned in this project how to insert a date picker and how to select a date by using the date picker. We also learned how to create a drop list of the weekdays. We also created a set of dynamic array functions that enables us to extract 
all the occurrences of the selected weekday in the drop list between the start date and the end date. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.